Let us pray. Loving God, no one is a stranger to you, and no one is ever far from your loving care. In your kindness, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Eleanor, whom you've called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading, which will be read for us by Nora Grace Josaitis. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord God said to Elijah, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. the 
Second reading will be read for us by Alec Josidas. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man come in his glory, all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and you clothed me? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, 
whatever you did to the least of my family of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a few more stamps, steps and ramps than there are at Madonna. So I had to <laughs> negotiate these steps every time you see me turn around. Don't laugh if I trip. <laughs> Eleanor sure has the power to bring people together. All you have to do is look around. Last night, this, this afternoon, there's all sorts of people here from political leaders, religious leaders, employed, unemployed, students and teachers, professionals and non-professionals. As I look around, I see people of every race and every lifestyle. But that's also a reflection of our church and of our faith that Eleanor loved so much. Everyone here is here this morning or this afternoon because we loved or were inspired by your wife, by your mother, by your grandmother, by your sister. And the family chose some great readings for today's celebration. Jesus always loved to share the message of God through parables. And every parable usually takes a, an ordinary event and changes it in such a way that it causes some active thinking in the minds of those who hear it. It challenges the hearers to think outside the box sometimes. But we can get so familiar with a Bible story that we sometimes forget the impact that it originally had. Whenever we hear this story that we chose for today of the last judgment scene, since we know the end of the story, we often classify the goats as bad and the sheep as good. But in reality, there's nothing bad about a goat. A goat provides a wonderful meal, provides milk, and provides some wonderful cheese for a nice Michigan salad. <laughs> There's nothing particularly better about a sheep. They provide food, they provide wool for weaving, nothing too extraordinarily good about sheep either. But as the king, it says, gathers the nations all around, he separates them as a shepherd separates sheep and goat. Well, there's nothing different about that either. See, actually, shepherds back in Jesus' day allowed their sheep and their goat to rest together in the same pen at night 
for security reasons. They were able to gather all the different herds together and keep them protected during the night. But in the morning, they had to get up early and get both the sheep and the goat out of the pen. We all know that sheep generally need to eat nice grass and clover, so they have to go where the good food is. Goats, on the other hand, eat everything. And they would just eat the sheep out of house and home. So they had to be sure that the sheep and the goat were separated. So the people that were listening to this story, there was nothing new happening to that story so far. So for the original hearers, it was just a status quo story. But in our parable, the sheep get singled out first. And they're told by the king, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was strange and alone, you came and visited me. And they all looked at one another and said, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty and sick or in prison? When did we ever do any of that? And the king says, when you did it to one of the least in my family, you did it to me. Well, the goats on the other side are probably rubbing their hands together thinking, oh my goodness, those sheep got something good. I can't wait to see what we're going to get. And Jesus, or the king, turns to them and says, go away, you accursed. When I was hungry, you gave me no food. When I was thirsty, you never gave me anything to drink. When I was sick or in prison, you never once came to visit me. When I was naked, you never clothed me. And they all said, wait a minute, wait a minute. When did we ever not see you hungry? When did we ever see you thirsty and not give you something to drink? When did we ever not get your name on a sick list at the church and not come and visit you? When? The king turns to them and says, when you fail to do it to one of the least in my family, you fail to do it to me. The key to the story is that neither group recognized Jesus. But those that treated everyone equally, they're the ones that got the eternal award. Eleanor tried her best to live this principle, treat everyone equally. Jesus lets us know many times that he comes to us today in the disguise of human flesh. The ancient Greeks called it persona, the person sounding through. Jesus is sounding through this flesh and blood. The real person sounds through the flesh, and Jesus sounds through us. Eleanor saw God everywhere, but especially in you and me. She treated everyone like they were in the front row. And the funny thing is, she also knew how to deal with those people who thought they should be in the front row. She dealt equally with executives, politicians, and church leaders. She also was able to work with the powerful in our nation and in our state and in our city to benefit the powerless. I think Eleanor discovered a long time ago that God is not found in the strong, heavy wind rending the mountains or crushing the rocks. God is not in the earthquake or the fires. But God is in the tiny whisper of a child in need, the mother without resources, or the senior with no family support. Eleanor paid attention to everyone and through Focus Hope taught us all to do the same. She and 
Father Cunningham were trailblazers in race relations. For some, she was hard to work with. I've heard some people say that she was strong-willed. I heard some people, other pulled me aside and said, no, she was just stubborn. <laughs> but she had a sense of humor that kept a balance in life. Today, this community has come together to thank God for having sent us Eleanor, a sister, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a faithful friend, a neighbor, a faithful parishioner, and a woman who struggled with us daily in this life to end racism, to end poverty, and to end injustice for over 79 years. Eleanor knew that Jesus is the bread of life. And that bread of life gave her strength for her journey each and every day. We still have a long way to go. We must now work together to keep our light shining so that we may continue to build a metropolitan community where all people may live in freedom, in harmony, in trust, and affection. Amen. say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. 